In our Sunrise Smart Start happening today, sentencing set for 10 o'clock this morning for the Monroe County man convicted on three counts of first degree sex abuse and second degree escape. 36 year old James Moore connected to three separate 2021 incidents of sexual abuse of a child less than 13. Moore was previously arrested in 2018 when police say he robbed a Canandaigua jewelry store while pretending to be a federal law enforcement officer. Happening today, a first of its kind gathering of mayors from across the state, all to kick off Gun Violence Awareness Month. Erica DeCoste joining us live in the newsroom with the details. Erica, good morning. Good morning. The event is hosted by Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown, but will feature mayors from across the state. New York City, Mount Vernon, Albany, Dunkirk, and Niagara Falls. It's been a long month for our country. We had the Buffalo mass shooting at a Tops back on May 14th. Then we had the school mass shooting in Uvalde on May 24th. In April of this year, the CDC declared gun violence as the leading cause of death among youth and teens. Here in Rochester, we are also experiencing a high level of violent crime. According to the governor's office, Rochester saw a 95% increase for gun violence in 2021. Mayor Malik Evans says they're working to improve 11% of the city's most troubled neighborhoods. And he's also proposing millions of dollars to go towards crime prevention programs and the city's budget to be voted on in a few weeks. The event will take place uh, online. It's going to be open to the public. Um, this Friday, there will be another event for the Awareness Month with local officials at City Hall. They'll also be lighting the skyline orange uh, to raise awareness this weekend. In the newsroom, Erica Cost, News 8. All right, Erica, thank you. And we have more information and a link to view the conference over at our website, rochesterfirst.com. All right, James, let's bring in and uh, have a little chit chat here about the morning forecast. And for folks who want to get out and get a walk, uh, maybe right now is the best time of day, right? Yes, I think that's good advice. Uh, try to take advantage of the morning before it gets too warm. We're at already at 70 degrees. A few spots a little bit cooler than that in the 60s, others warmer in 72, 73 degrees. Hazy hot and a little humid. No chance for any rain this morning. Uh, we're already well after an hour after sunrise, so you know that number is going to climb quickly. Upper 80s to near 90 degrees. Average high is 74. If you're wondering if this is a record, uh, not quite. 91 would be the record, so very close. Uh, the heat doesn't last long because we've got storms for tomorrow. We'll break down the impacts of those storms and the last look at the eight day at the end of the show. Mark? All right, James, uh, thank you. Uh, checking the roads with our sunrise traffic again. We mentioned it just a moment ago. There's an accident, a uh, crash in Greece, McCall Road, Stone Road. The main arteries, you see your view of 490 here downtown. No issues there. 390, 590 up to speed as well. Happening nationally, Uvalde Mayor Don McLaughlin talking about the impact last week's school shooting had on the community. Today marking exactly one week since that tragedy. Funerals beginning this week. 19 children and two teachers lost their lives the day after a gunman opened fire at a Texas elementary school. Mayor McLaughlin calling out the outpouring of love and support from around the world, calling it moving, saying while the town won't get over it, they'll get through it. He said he doesn't want any of the students or staff who experienced the shooting to ever have to step foot in that school again. I don't think anybody's plans are but to tear that building down and it needs to be torn down. I would never ask, expect a child to have to ever walk in those doors ever and ever again. That, that building needs to be gone, taken away and, and gone. The mayor says he is pushing for more mental health resources in the state of Texas and insists on politicians to stop, quote, kicking the can down the road. Well, in Washington, President Biden says he will continue to push for action on guns in the wake of the shootings in Texas and Buffalo. Basil John reporting the president believes he and Congress have a responsibility to get something done. It makes no sense to be able to something that can fire up to 300 rounds. After visiting Uvalde, Texas and paying respect to the victims in the Robb Elementary School shooting, President Joe Biden says these shootings need to stop. The pain is palpable and 
I think a lot of it's unnecessary. He's called on Congress to take action and pass legislation that can make a difference, and he hopes Republicans will cooperate. I do think there's an opportunity right now to be able to pass something significant. Connecticut Democratic Senator Chris Murphy told CBS's Face the Nation he is meeting with Republicans to get legislation across the finish line. Republicans are not willing to support everything that I support, like banning assault weapons, but uh, I really think that we could pass something that saves lives. Murphy says red flag laws, background check expansion, and safe storage are some of the things on the table. We should have an all of the above strategy, and that's ultimately the path to 60 votes. This is insane, and there's things we can do to stop it. On ABC's This Week, Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger believes the gun owners and supporters need to step up. As a person that appreciates and, and believes in the Second Amendment, we have to be the ones putting forward reasonable solutions to gun violence. Kinzinger wants to raise the age to buy a gun to 21, but does not think that will get enough bipartisan support right now. I think we need to get there eventually. Basil John reporting there, a bipartisan group of senators will meet this week to talk about what they can do to move the issue forward. Some developing local stories now as gun violence continues to be a topic of discussion, a dangerous trend in Rochester continuing shots striking people's homes. Police are investigating the latest incident from last night around 930 on Lakeview Terrace. According to police, an occupied house with four people inside had been struck by gunfire, though nobody was injured. No suspects are in custody. Memorial Day, not free of the violence either. Police tell us a 32-year-old man was shot on North Street in the city just before 11 a.m. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. And police have identified the person shot and killed on Hudson Avenue two days ago. Officers calling or called to a car crash around 5 p.m. when they found 42-year-old Orlando Santiago in his truck suffering from several gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators say the man was driving on Hudson near Roycroft Drive when another driver fired into his truck. Police say this is Rochester's 27th homicide of the year. Well, Rochester police making an arrest after a person crashed an ATV into a police cruiser Sunday. This happened on North Clinton Avenue around 1030 at night. Police say the driver was illegally passing another vehicle, then did a wheelie and crashed head on into that police car. He immediately fled on another ATV, but was found shortly thereafter. No injuries were reported. Yesterday, marking two years since a peaceful protest turned violent in downtown Rochester, the rally following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It started around 1 in the afternoon. By 6 that evening, things had changed. Former Rochester Police Chief Laron Singletary calling it, quote, pure chaos. The scene included tear gas, cars on fire, and looting in parts of the city. All right, here's what uh, some folks might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Have you heard about this? The Mona Lisa unharmed after an attack yesterday by a visitor at the Louvre who tried to smash the glass, then smeared cake on the glass. The perpetrator was a man who was disguised as an old lady and jumped out of a wheelchair before attacking the glass. Uh, he says his reason, the impacts of climate change. How A equals B here, I'm not mm. sure, but... Uh, that's how it went down at the Louvre. I, d uh, I think that glass could probably handle a bullet. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. think the cake's not getting through. No, wow. And then I think that was the art, really. It looks like people were enjoying. Yeah. With the cameras there. Yeah, right. Uh, in this age of the cell phone, there's a lot of that going on. I would think at the Louvre and museums all around the world. But yeah, weird situation there in Paris. Weird. Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, definitely thinking about that one. Uh, bus stop forecast temperature starting off very mild uh, in the 70s already and will easily climb into the mid 80s this afternoon. Stay cool out there. Uh, if you don't like the heat, I've got good news for you. It is gone tomorrow with storms. Uh, looks like we could deal with some strong storms in the afternoon. Sometime time frame I'm putting about 1 and 7 p.m. So you want to keep your eye to the sky. Stay with us as well. Eric will have a great breakdown this evening. I'll cover it again tomorrow morning as well as we gear you up for that. And then get ready for cooling down 40s, 50s, 60s, low 70s in the extended forecast. So I think we got something for everybody here uh, in this eight day as we head toward June. Uh, today, the last day of May, saying goodbye and welcoming in the next month. Mm, well, a nice start to a summer. Yes, yeah, certainly. Meteorological summer technically yeah. starts, uh, starts tomorrow. Yep.
Well, thank you, James, very much. And thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great Tuesday.